Hi, I'm Yav Columbus, and we'll talk about options between regret minimizing agents. This is a joint work with Noam Nissan. So we, we're going to talk about settings where several users interact over some online platform. These users are assisted by software agents that play the repeated game and optimize on their behalf. And the types of games we'll focus on are online auctions, like the ones used by the large internet companies to sell ad positions online. And an important example are the keyword auctions, like the ones we see on search results web pages, like here on the right. And the way this basically works is that every time we enter a search query for some keyword, then the platform runs an auction between the advertisers who are the players in this auction. And each one of them places a bid, which is the maximum amount he is willing to pay for a click on his ad. And the auction then uh, sets the locations of the uh, ad positions and payments for the players. So this is a huge industry and these auctions run at an enormous rate. And in fact, it's so fast that it's not really practical or not even possible to manually place a bid for each and every auction. And so most of the bids are being placed by various auto bidding tools. And the way this basically works is that users enter their key parameters into the auto bidding agent interface. And then the agents uh, automatically place bids, interact and learn and the users can observe the long-term outcomes. So to illustrate this, let's say that Alice and Bob are users in some online platform. Then in the classic auction setting, uh, each one of them places a bid in every auction, and then the auction returns the locations and payments, and Alice and Bob have some utility, and this goes on repeatedly. When we move to the auto-bidding setting, uh, things are a bit different. Here, Alice and Bob, uh, define for their agents the maximum allowed bid and then the agents place bids in a series of auctions and Alice and Bob can observe the long-term outcomes from this series of auctions and they have some utility from these outcomes. So what uh, happens in this gray box here is in fact that uh, every agent is running some learning algorithm that aims to optimize the utility for its user but it optimizes according to the parameter that were reported, to the parameters that were reported by the user. Uh, and so, in fact, Alice and Bob are not really playing the original auction as it was defined by the, the platform, but instead they are playing what we call a meta auction, in which their actions are the parameters that they choose to give uh, to their agents, and their uh, utilities, utilities are determined by the dynamics of these agents. And I'll just mention that uh, this metagame model is more general. You can think about it in other settings as well, and we do that in a different paper. It opens uh, many interesting questions. So the types of learning agents uh, we'll consider are regret minimizing agents, which means that they play such that the long-term average empirical payoffs approach the payoff of the best fixed strategy in hindsight. So they do not regret not playing this fixed strategy. There are many well-known examples for such algorithms, like multiplicative weights, follow the perturbed leader, online gradient descent, so on and so forth. Importantly, it has been shown that real-world bids in these ad auctions are by large consistent with the regret minimization model. And we know that the dynamics of regret minimizing agents approach the set of uh, what is called coarse correlated equilibria of the game. In fact, by definition, if all agents have low regrets, then the joint action distribution is close to a course equilibrium. But we also know that uh, the set of course equilibria may be quite large in many games, also in our auctions, may be too large to analyze quantities of interest here, like the players' utilities, revenue, and social welfare. So to analyze these quantities, we we'll need to uh, look deeper into the dynamics and see what's actually going on in these games. And the types of auctions we look at uh, are uh, second price and first price auctions and their generalized versions. The second price auction is known to be incentive compatible. And so perhaps it would be natural to expect that we'll get the second price outcome, meaning that the high player with the higher value is going to win and is going to pay the second price. Now the first price auction is not incentive compatible, but it is known that it's Nash and correlated equilibria uh, all yield the second price outcome. Uh, but it, it's also known that this uh, auction has other course equilibria. Some of them are even not efficient. So here it's less clear what we should expect. Are we going to get the second price outcome 
how are we going to get one of these other equilibria? So the questions we are going to ask are first, what, what are going to be the outcomes when learning agents, specifically regret minimizing agents, play these options? And second, what parameters should the users report to their own agents? Specifically, is it in the best interest of a user to truthfully report his value to his own learning agent? It may seem natural because the agent is optimizing for this value, but we'll see. And as I said, to answer these questions, we'll need to dive deeper into the dynamics and to understand what is in fact the metagame that these users are playing. And we'll see that the first point here is in fact not correct. We are not going to get the second price outcome in the second price auction. Whereas the second point here is correct. We are going to get the second price outcome in the first price auction. And this is a result that we found quite surprising when we started the, analyzing these options. And of course, there's lots of related work. Uh, I won't get into it due to a lack of time, but you can read uh, more details about it in the paper. So uh, start from the second price auction. A uh, result says that in the limit empirical distribution of multiplicative weights agents in a second price auction, auction with a va a values V and W, the high agent uh, is going to bid uniformly between the second price and its value. And the low agent is going to bid with full support between zero and his value, which is the second price, uh, with monotone density. And so the high agent is going to always win, but he's going to pay strictly less than the second price. So we're not getting the second price outcome. And this is indeed what we see in simulations. Uh, here we have a simulation of two players with the values of one and one half. And we see the bids over time and the solid lines show uh, running window averages of the bids over 100 auctions. And uh, we see that indeed the high agent always wins, except for a small number of auctions in the beginning. And the bids of the low agent are uh, much lower on average than the second price. So the average a bid here is 0.27, which is significantly less than the second price. And this average bid is the price that the high agent is going to pay. And on the right, we see the bid densities of the two agents. And we see that indeed it behaves as the theorem says. Uh, in these simulations, the high agent uh, bids uniformly between the second price and his value. And the low agent uh, bids with monotone density with full support below the second price. And uh, this result has a corollary, corollary that from the perspectives of, perspective of the users, uh, we are not getting the second price outcome. So the second price auction with multiplicative weights agents is not incentive compatible. And we can see this in the following example. Uh, let's say that Alice has a value of 0.4 and Bob has a value of 0.5. And now let's assume that uh, Bob is going to report his true value to his own uh, learning agent. Now, what should Alice do? So if Alice is going to use her true value of 0.4, uh, then uh, she's going to always lose the auction and get zero utility on average. But if Alice is going to manipulate her own agent by misreporting her value as a higher value of one, then she's going to always win the auction. And in fact, we're going to get exactly these dynamics that we saw. And she's going to have on average positive utility. So we see that truthful declarations are definitely not a dominant strategy. And in fact, they're not even an equilibrium. So the users do have incentives to uh, manipulate their own learning agents to misreport their values. And we're not getting incentive compatibility in the second price auction. Now, when we move to the first price auction, uh, we have uh, this result that says that in the first price auction, between any two mean-based regret minimizing agents, and mean-based learning algorithms are a family of algorithms defined by Braverman et al. Uh, that includes many algorithms like multiplicative weights and many others. And so if the dynamics converge to any single distribution, then the high player, the high agent is going to always win and is going, going to pay the second price. So we are getting the second price outcome. And uh, indeed we see this in simulations. So on the left, we have a simulation like the one that we saw before with two agents, uh, one with a value of one, the other one with a value of one half. And we see the bids over time. 
we see that indeed the a high agent always wins, except for a small number of options in the beginning. Uh, and these bids uh, converge uh, to the second price of one half. And the bids of the other agents uh, are uh, somewhere below that. And on the right, we see a different simulation with uh, symmetric uh, agents, both with a value of one. And we see that the bids converge uh, to the second price of one in this case, but convergence is very slow. Uh, and in the inset, we see a simulation of a million options uh, in a logarithmic scale for the time for the horizontal axis. And we see that the convergence is very slow, but still the bids converge uh, to the second price. And uh, this result has an interesting corollary that from the perspective of the users, they see a second price auction when they uh, report their uh, values to their agents. And so the first price auction uh, with mean-based regret minimizing agents is incentive compatible. And this is in contrast to what we saw in the second price option. So uh, the idea of the proof at the very high level is that uh, first we define a refinement of the class of course equilibria that we call quant dominated. Uh, and in these equilibria, uh, players do not play actions that are weakly dominated by any of their other actions but only relative to the support of the actions of the opponent. Then we have a lemma that says that in any finite game, uh, if the dynamics of mean-based agents converge to a single course equilibrium, then it must be quant dominated. So this is in any game, not only auctions. Then we have a, another lemma that connects this back to our auction and shows that uh, in the first price auction, in any quant dominated course equilibrium, the high player is going to always win and is going to pay the second price. Okay, so this is the, the overall structure. And we also study generalized first price options. Uh, so I'll just mention the results uh, briefly here. So first we calculate uh, the unique mixed Nash equilibrium for this auction, which apparently wasn't known. And then uh, we see that the agents uh, do not converge to this uh, equilibrium, to this Nash equilibrium, and we characterize the empirical equilibrium that is obtained by multiplicative weights agents. Uh, so this is empirical analysis, not proofs. Uh, and then we analyze the equilibrium of the meta game uh, between the users who report the uh, parameters to their agents for the case of symmetric users. And we see that uh, in this equilibria, one of the users is going to report a very high value uh, arbitrarily high value to his uh, own agent, uh, and the other uh, user is going to use a very low value, a low value of uh, 0.54 uh, uh, of his uh, two value. And in fact, the users are locked in a kind of a hawk dove game between themselves, where every player prefers to be the, the high bidder, but if both use uh, high values for their agents, then both are going to lose. And interestingly, uh, these strategic manipulations lead in these uh, equilibria uh, uh, lead to significant collusion. So the users capture 89% of the welfare, which leaves only a small fraction to the auctioneer, which is probably against the interests of the auctioneer or of the platform designer. Uh, so uh, to recap, our conclusions are that uh, first, uh, we see that the uh, dynamics of learning agents uh, induce a metagame on the users. Uh, and the, the, these metagames sometimes may have significant differences, significantly different properties than the original game was defined. And we study other uh, metagames in other settings in a companion paper. And second, perhaps a takeaway message uh, is that uh, uh, our results show the types of phenomena that can happen in the auto bidding world. And things can be quite different. And uh, we saw that the uh, second price auctions in the auto bidding setting may lose their incentive compatibility. And we saw this for uh, multiplicative weights. And we saw that first price auctions uh, become incentive compatible, at least for a large class of regret minimizing agents. And there are lots of interesting questions for future work, studying more meta games, studying dynamics in other, perhaps more complex auctions and maybe uh, designing agents that do something uh, better than just minimize regret. Thank you.
All right. Uh, thank you, Joa, for the very nice talk and seeing a different perspective on first price auctions. Um, so since Joa is here, uh, does the audience have uh, any questions for the speaker? Hi. Hi. Thanks for the great talk. I have a question. Uh, uh, I think in your theorem two, you say that in the first price auction with two players, the high value bidder always wins and uh, its average utility will converge. Uh, is that right? Uh, the bids, the bids uh, converge. Uh, his bid is oh, going the, to converge to the second price. Yes. The, the average uh, in an average sense or the... Yeah, it's, uh, it's the same as the utility. Um, it's uh, what wh what we are interested in is uh, the average uh, sense, uh, but in fact it uh, converges to a range that is uh, epsilon or two epsilon wide, so it's basically the same, the okay. average and the and the actual bid. Yes. Oh, you mean the average, uh, the bids in the uh, the bids in history. Uh, the average of bids in history is. Uh, actually, the same as the bid in in the like last iterate. This is the, what we are interested in analyzing is the outcome, uh, uh, which uh, which is important for the revenue, uh, social welfare, and for the utilities of the players. So we are interested in the average outcome. Uh, but what happens, in fact, and it happens, you see it in the proof, is that. Uh, uh, it cannot be that there is a um, long lasting, I'm, I'm not talking about transient uh, um, uh, things that happen in the learning phase. It cannot be that there is a, a long standing uh, course equilibrium where the, the bids of the high agent are in a wide range. So um, yeah. that's the, the, the structure of the proof uh, goes, as, as I showed in the talk, goes through these. Uh, Quant dominated equilibria. And in these quant dominated equilibria, when you translate them to the first price auction, uh, you see that the support of the bids uh, in the long term uh, becomes very narrow. So, so I think, unless you are interested in this epsilon plus minus epsilon range, I think uh, the two concepts that you uh, just uh, said about uh, convergence of the actual internal distribution of the agents or and convergence of the time average are in fact the same, but we are interested in the time average because it's important for revenue, social welfare, and for the average utilities. So that's our main uh, main thing oh, that we I are see. looking at. I see, I see, I see. It's important to study the average since it's uh, about the revenue, but uh, actually, uh, all the, the, the paper next will, will show, show that the, uh, in some cases, the uh, last iterate and time average will be different. Yeah. Yes, I think there is in the first price auction, uh, there is a, this technical issue that uh, if the bids are on some epsilon grid, then uh, yeah. there are equilibria that are uh, the, the agents uh, see them as equivalent because they give them the same payoff, but they are only epsilon or two epsilon apart. So Maybe there, there may be settings where this may be important. I'm not sure if economically, I mean, the, the question that we focus on is more on the, the time average yeah. and what we get for uh, the actual convergence of the internal distributions is uh, technically it happens on the way. Um, so, yes. Yeah. So, okay. Sorry Thank to interrupt you. the interesting discussion, but uh, in interest of time, I think we should move on to the- okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Very interesting question, thank you.